Hi, my name is Mark Kibbe. I'm a respiratory therapist here at Kaiser Anaheim. Today we will be reviewing the INO Max DSIR Plus. We are going to review how to assemble the pre-use setup, how to do a pre-use checkout, and then also how to place the injector module and sampling line in both an adult circuit and high frequency circuit. So let's go ahead and take this ride together. Now I'm going to show you the needed components to um, create your assembly circuit for your pre-use check. Most importantly is your injector module. Um, something to note is you do have this green arrow line. This indicates which way the flow should be going. So remember that. You have your injector module cable, your injector module tubing or line. You have your sample line with filter disc. You have a separate oxygen tubing one piece of corrugated tubing, you have a, a oxygen adapter, a 15 millimeter adapter, a sample line adapter, and a water trap filter. Now these are all the components needed to put together a uh, pre-use assembly circuit. So now we're going to get into that. Now let's take all the components we just reviewed and put together our uh, pre-use circuit. I like to start off by grabbing the injector module first and putting this together. Um, so let's start off with that. You're going to go ahead and take your 22 millimeter adapter, place that in one side, your corrugated tubing, add it to the other side. Go ahead and place your O2 adapter there and your sample line adapter. And now our injector module is assembled. So now let's go ahead and start adding the cables and tubing. So you have your injector cable, which goes in the front end. You also see a little picture or diagram here that kind of shows you how to um, place this in. There is a little red dot that you want to make sure that you line up with the dot on the top of the machine and it should click in simply. Um, remember do not force these cables in because there are sensitive prongs on the inside. Okay. Now we're going to take our injector line tubing and that will go on the other side. And just like our picture now we're going to connect our injector module. And again you see the red dot on the cable the red dot on the top of your injector module, line those two up, and they should click in securely. Then you're going to add your injector line tubing, and that's your injector module setup. Now we're going to go ahead and add our um, sample line and uh, filter disc. Those items will screw in over here on the right side of your machine and then onto your injector module at the sample line adapter okay. then you have your oxygen tubing which will go on the oxygen adapter end and then the other side will go to a high pressure oxygen hookup and we have an e-cylinder tank on the back here. And very last we have our water trap filter which goes right here. So you can see here is our pre-use assembly and now let's do our pre-use check. Now that we've assembled our pre-use check assembly and circuit, we're going to perform a pre-use check and calibration. Remember this must be done prior to placing on your patients. This test is good for 24 hours and then the test needs to be done again. If you're going to use it on your patient, you have 10 minutes to use it before you need to shut off your tanks. So keep those things in mind. Let's go ahead and do a pre-use check. Now we're going to do the pre-use check. First you're going to want to turn on your machine by flipping the power switch found on the back side of your monitor. Uh, with the DS um, IR Plus, the machine will automatically go into a low calibration. Now how do you get to the pre-use menu? 
From your home screen, you'll see the pages button here on the top right hand corner. Go ahead and press that. Now in this menu, you'll see a pre-use check, auto purge, alarm history, locale, high cal, and settings. We are going to now do the pre-use checkout. So go ahead and press that. And we're gonna go through the initial connections. First, we're gonna make sure we confirm the water trap bottle and water separator cartridge are in place. We've done so right here. Connect the patient gas sample line to the sample line inlet port. We've done that as well. So go ahead and press next. Connect the injector module cable and tubing to the injector module and the INO DSIR. So these are your cables, your tubing, and it is connected to our injector module. We've done all that in our setup. Go ahead and press next. We're gonna verify our main power supply. Indicator light is illuminated and is green. Found there. Go ahead and press next. Load to INO max cylinders onto the cart. Check cylinder concentration and expiration date. We have two brand new cylinders in the back, so we're good there. Press next. We're gonna connect the INO max regulator to the INO max cylinder and connect the INO max regulator hose to the INO max gas inlet at the back of the machine. So I'm go ahead and turn the machine now. All right, you'll find two different regulators, one regulator for your left tank, one regulator for your right tank, and then you have two um, inlets, the left side's for your left tank, right side's for your right tank. So first you're gonna wanna take off your dust cap from your tank, exposing the threading. Grab one of your regulators, which has your pressure gauge on the top. And you're gonna carefully thread this onto your tank. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Okay, nice hand tight is okay. You're gonna take the regulator line and plug it into the back of the monitor. So you hear a click, and now that is secured. Let's go ahead and turn this back around. Next, connect to the INO blender inlet hose to INO Max DSR, DSIR blender gas outlet. Slide quick connect cover over the connector. Connect the high pressure O2 hose to the back of the INO blender, then the 50 PSI gas source. We'll go ahead and turn this again. You'll find your high pressure O2 hose. We have it connected to an E cylinder, and just make sure your E cylinder is in the auxiliary. Okay, go ahead and press next. Confirm the INO Max DSIR cart. Infrared cable or transport regulator cap assembly is connected to the INO Max DSIR infrared cable inlet. So again, remember, here is the infrared gauge. You wanna make sure you do not obstruct this gauge. This is the counter to see how many hours we've been using this tank. Next, initial uh, connections are now complete. So let's move on to the next set. So um, the system's gonna do an automatic purge. So ver verify the INO Max regulator is connected to INO Max cylinder and the back of the INO Max DSIR. We've done that. Next, open the cylinder valve. Verify the cylinder pressure is greater than 500 PSI. So I go ahead and turn that. I'm looking at my pressure gauge. It looks like I have 750 PSI in here right now. So I'll go ahead and press next. And we're gonna go ahead and close this tank. And we're gonna watch the cylinder pressure gauge for 30 seconds. If no pressure decrease is observed, high pressure leak test is complete. So I'm looking at my gauge, I still see 750. I know there's no leak. Move on to the next step. All right, confirm injector module is out of the patient breathing circuit and press next. So my injector module, it is not in the breathing circuit. So we're good there. And I'm gonna press next. It's going to purge. Okay, automatic purge is complete and it's telling me to open the valve. So I'm going to reopen the valve and press next. Okay, assemble pre use setup connectors and set the flow meter to 10 liters. So I'm going to reach in the back of the E cylinder and turn that to 10 liters. Okay. And now we're going to um, press next. 
Turn the integrated back up on the 250 mLs per minute. You'll find that knob on the front. It says 250 mLs per minute. Go ahead and click that on. Verify the backup alarm occurs. You'll see in the top left here that that backup alarm went off. Press next. Allow values to stabilize. We're going to verify the following parameters. We're going to have nitric dioxide or the NO2 at less than one part per million. Our nitric oxide between 14 and 26 parts per million. So let's wait for these values to stabilize our NO2 and our nitric. Okay, less than one and between 14 and 26. Looks good. Press next. All right, backup delivery test is complete. Turn off the integrated backup system. Now that's turned off. Verify the O2 flow meter is still at set at 10, which it is. Go ahead and press next. Press next to automatically set the INO dose to 40 parts. So my nitric will automatically go up to 40 once I hit next. And we're gonna allow these values to stabilize. We're looking for FiO2 between 92 and 98%, a nitric dioxide of less than 1.5 parts per million, a nitric oxide of 35 to 45 parts per million. So my FiO2, my nitric dioxide, and my nitric oxide. So FiO2 is good, 92. NO2 is good, less than 1.5. And my NO is between 35 and 45. Next. Performance test is complete. The INO max will go back to zero after I press next. Turn off the O2 flow meter, remove the pre-use oxygen tubing from the O2 flow meter and connect to the front. So I'm gonna turn that off in the back, go back to auxiliary, and I'm gonna take the O2 tubing and plug it into the blender in front and press next. So remove the injector module from the patient pre-use setup and reconnect the connections. So here, I'm gonna remove my O2 and my corrugated tubing, place those two together, removing my injector module, and now I have this setup. And I'm gonna press next. And I'm gonna manually set my dose to 40 parts per million and 10 liters per minute using my blender. So turn to 40, turn up to 10, and press next. Again, we're going to watch our values, wait for those to stabilize, and what we're looking for is a nitric oxide between 32 and 48 parts per million. Okay, we've reached 32, which is within range, so let's go and press next. Turn dose and O2 flow back to zero. So I'm going to manually turn this to zero. Turn off my flow. And I'm going to remove my preview setup from the blender. Okay, and press next. Now our pre-use procedure is complete. And um, if you're not starting the therapy within 10 minutes, you need to close the cylinder and depressurize the regulator. So keep that in mind. In this portion of the video, I'm gonna show you how to place the injector module and sampling line in both in an adult ventilator and a high frequency ventilator. First, you're gonna verify with your INO that your pre-use uh, checkout has been completed. Now I'm gonna show you how to insert your injector module and your sampling line. So after taking your injector module, you're gonna to wanna to disconnect your corrugated tubing and your sampling line and I'll set that aside and we'll just do the injector module first. Like I had mentioned before, take a look at your arrow here. That's going to want to go with the flow to the patient. Some additional adapters you will need is a 22 millimeter, which will go on that part of your injector module, and then your 15. And this injector module is going to go on the dry side of your chamber. So place it there, arrow flowing down, and reconnect your inspiratory tubing. Now we're going to go ahead and insert our sampling line. Remember, in uh, for correct sampling numbers, you want to make sure that 
your sampling line is at least six inches away from your patient and that it's not mixing with your expiratory gas. So we're going to make sure that we put this sampling line on the inspiratory side. An additional adapter you will need is a 15 millimeter adapter and that one is going to go on your sampling line adapter. Now we're going to disconnect from the inspiratory side of your patient, connect it to the Y, and reconnect the inspiratory limb. And now we have six inches away from the expiratory, and so there's no mixture of gases. And this is how you properly set up your sampling line and your injector module on an adult ventilator. Now I'm going to show you how to insert your injector module and sampling line into a high frequency oscillator ventilatory circuit. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to grab my, my setup. I'm not going to need the corrugated tubing, tubing so I'm going to remove that. I no longer need the sample line adapter so I'm going to remove that. Some additional pieces you will need that are very important is your one-way valve for your high frequency and your um, elbow sample line adapter. I'll show you where these go. First, you're going to want to put your 22 millimeter adapter onto your dry side of your chamber. Then you're going to put your one-way valve going to the patient. And again, remember, your arrow is the indication of flow to your patient. Now I'm going to attach that to the top of the one-way valve and reconnect the gas source. Now for the sample line, I'm going to grab my circuit here. I'm going to move my temperature probe from this position to the middle position. Make sure you don't lose your cap. Move my heater probe to the back. I'm going to add that elbow that we talked about and then attach my sample line to that elbow. And now we have a sample line. And that's how you insert your injector module and sample line into a high frequency. Thank you for joining us. Today we reviewed the INO Max DSIR Plus nitric delivery system. We reviewed the pre use setup, a pre use checkout, and how to place an injector module and sampling line in both the adult and neonatal ventilator circuit. All right, thank you. Hello, my name is Julio Garcia. I am the Night Shift ADA for Kaiser Permanente, and this is Tips for Your Competencies, Nitric Edition. Thank you and enjoy. Remember to pause each slide as needed. Okay, let's get into it. The mechanics of actions. As you can see, the vascular smooth muscle cells that surround the small resistant arteries in the lung, which means that the NO is a pulmonary vasodilator. Helps improve oxygenation, improves pulmonary vasodilation. It's a selective pulmonary vasodilator, so only works in the lungs to increase blood flow from the heart to the lungs. Okay, so let's review some NICU guidelines that have changed. Let's first of all remember the purpose is to deliver nitric oxide to neonates above 34 weeks. Anyone below 34 weeks is per physician discretion. So this new guidelines is the 2020 rule, which is how you start nitric. According to the rule, initiate NO at 20 parts per million for any oxygen index at 20. Improve in improvements in PaO2 greater than 20 or SpO2 uh, greater than 5% is considered a complete response with the goal of uh, maintaining adequate blood gas with the SpO2 of 90 to 97. Now the weaning portion of the 60-60 rule, which indicates that if expected response of NO, wean FO2 to maintain a PaO2 between 60 to 80, wean NO starting 60 minutes after demonstrating response, if FO2 is less than 60 and PaO2 is greater than 60 or SpO2 of 90, Wean NO by 5 parts per, per, per million every 4 hours until NO is 5. Then wean NO by 1 Q4 hours. Successful weans define a stable SpO2, PaO2 with FL2 that has not been able to increase or less than 15% increase. Now, it's a little different with adults. Um, the adult guidelines change when you are weaning. Weaning when FL2 is less than or equal to 70% with a PaO2 greater or equal to 80 milligrams hemoglobin weaned NO by 
five parts per million every four to six hours. I think the most important part of this is number six, once NO is discontinued, the FiO2 may need to be increased by 10 to 20% to maintain adequate PaO2 on your ventilators. Make sure that you're aware of this because sometimes it confuses some of the therapists. So here's a little bit extra information on how to fill in the documentation. Remember your oxygen index and remember that's always suggested to start at 20 parts per million for neonates and adults. Remember to get your uh, blood gases every Q6 to 8 hours, more per physician ordered. Troubleshooting alarms are important because they've happened to me and they will certainly happen to you, especially with the red alarms. Remember to always switch to backup delivery or bag the patient if necessary. And that's it for tips for your competencies. Thank you.